This view right here is pretty much the entire reason for this island and probably also my favorite area. And with that, hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel and also welcome to Meliora, my, as I like to call it, color coordinated fairy meadow. It's a very complicated name. I'll show you what's behind it and I'm excited to show you the finished result. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. I have had this island for almost a year and it's been a definite struggle, but we made it. We made it to this point and I'm ready to be your personal tour guide. So of course, the first thing we're gonna do is take a look at the map. The DA is right there on the screen. I will also show you a custom map that I drew for this island according to the colors. And I will also link my website in the description box below where you can also find the DA as well as any used custom designs, etc. We've got my resident rep right by the entrance and then we have different villagers according to the colors. We've got Fauna and Bill in the red section. Then we've got Mallory for purple. We have Sheldon for the yellow section. Then we will move over to Humphrey for the black section and Humphrey's neighbor is Flurry, my absolute favorite villager for the white section. We also have Filbert for blue. The pink area has two villagers with Ursula as well as Freckles. And then last but not least, we've got Sally for the orange section and of course the big center. And without further ado, without talking too much, let me just show you around and kind of explain my idea behind this island. So there is actually some kind of storyline and it all has like a bunch of magical components. In case you've seen my Four Seasons Island, uh, this one is basically the same world or the same universe. And my resident rep is the same one as in that island, only this time she's not a witch, but she's actually a little fairy, you know, she tapped into some fairy magic to help this island um, be, you know, uh, brought back into balance, I guess. The storyline was basically that this island was kind of dull and there was no color. And so she had to split it into all the different parts. Oh, <gasps> Sally over here, look at her. <laughs> so she had to split it into all the different colored parts to bring, you know, the general color back to the island. So this is the entrance. I wanted this to be a very like meadow uh, kind of vibe. We've got mostly green and then some cream and white colors kind of going on. And as you can already kind of spot, we're going to be morphing freckles. This is not your area. Excuse me. <laughs> we're going to be morphing into the red area. But before we do that, I will, of course, show you my house as well. I just kind of want to lead you around this part. Um, as you can see, resident services is super, super close, but that was totally my intention because I didn't want it to block any of the um, middle section. Hello, Flurry. If you decide to dream of this island yourself, there is a little ladder here. We are gonna take a look at that at the very end though, and just kind of make our way across the island first, because I feel like that makes a bit more sense. Um, but yeah, there is one there is one there just for your knowledge. And then over here, we've got my own little house. I wanted this to blend in with the very like natural kind of aesthetic. And then of course we've got a glowing moss pond because we need all the magic. Speaking of magic, let's go inside and take a look at that too. I will say this house is a little bit random just because I had a few ideas that I wanted to bring across and they don't necessarily match, but that's totally fine. So the main room right here is supposed to show kind of her ties to nature. That's why kind of the inside looks almost a bit like the outside. And then you can see all of these paint cans kind of standing around because obviously her magic is very much tied to the different colors on this island. And so, you know, this is... This is just kind of where she she tries out some stuff or I don't know. I, I don't know how fairy magic works, you know? All right, let's go downstairs first. And this is another one of those ideas. I know that so many people love this wallpaper and flooring combination though. So do I. I used it on Equilibrio, so I kind of wanted to use it here. And as you can see, you know, we've got the cauldron in the middle, the suspicious cauldron. This time, obviously, with all the different colors, she is trying to restore this island after all. And then every single color has a bit of a magical source as well. So that's kind of what's going on in this room. Uh, this was fun to build, probably not my usual style, but I kind of had fun. So um, yeah, there's that. <laughs> And then of course we have the upstairs, which is the actual room where my rep kind of lives and sleeps. 
And to some of you, this may seem a little bit similar. Uh, and that is because I basically used the equilibrio kind of outline of this room and basically the, the blueprint, I guess, um, and kind of just tried adapting it to this different color scheme. So back on equilibrio, it was much, much darker and it had this very like witchy and magical vibe. And this time around, there's still a bunch of candles. I still think there's a lot of like magical things going on, but it is much more on the lighter and like meadowy side. And I'm super happy with how um, it turned out and how like similar and yet different those two, uh, those two rooms look. And with that, let's continue the tour outside. There we go. I've already shown you around this little entrance part. So I would say we're gonna straight up make our way over to the next section which is going to be the red part. So basically um, one thing that also kind of belongs to the red part is the Able Sisters over here. I tried assigning the different buildings to the colors. I thought, you know, red kind of fits the most. Tried to get a red outfit for the DA as well, which was kind of a struggle, unfortunately, but I am happy with the dress that we got. And then if we head up here, you will see that the red area kind of has a, I don't know, I guess like a magical foresty vibe. Um, I did want to try for every area to not venture into like a kid core aesthetic. I do feel like with the very specific colors that is very easy to do, but I intentionally wanted to try and stick to a more magical like fairy looking one. So um, I tried to, you know, use a bunch of the star fragments and then mushrooms. And I always tried to kind of bring it into a magical territory. If you can count the amount of times I say magical in this video, you know, prop, props to you because I feel like it's going to be a lot of times. And then I always, always love the areas like this where you can already see the, the next part because it's so, so clearly kind of shows the difference in between those areas. Before we head into Fauna's house, I will show you the rest of the area. So um, again, lots and lots of mushrooms in this part. I decorated this island mostly for vibes, I would say. Um, so there's not too many like super themed areas, but we basically just um, have a bunch of the, you know, color things. And I really wanted to bring that kind of idea across. Um, yeah, Bill over here has what I like to call the magical, um, magical? <laughs> Uh, tomato farm, tomato and mushroom farm, I guess. I don't know what those tomatoes are, but we're not going to really question it. And then we're going to head inside Bill's house, although his is not the best. I'll explain to you why. So each and every interior is supposed to, as you can hopefully see, show the different colors very well. And because there is a tomato farm outside, um, my friend had the idea of giving him kind of like a tomato puree kind of cooking house and then, you know, give him a little laundry station because he has to clean up all the stains as well, right? Um, unfortunately, as I was looking for a DA, Bill decided to put up this uh, cooking station, which is definitely not my idea. Um, but I had been looking for an outfit for Able Sisters for so long that I decided to keep it. So unfortunately, Bill kind of has, uh, yeah, has a kitchen there that I did not want there, but it's okay. He seems to be happy. And I think that you can still kind of, you know, tell that this is supposed to be a red interior. So it's all good in the end. All right, and then since Fauna's home, we're of course also going to look at her interior. I will say the red interiors were much harder than I thought they were going to be because there's not really any like bed that's just plain red. Most of them are like orange wood or um, they're not really the vibe that I was going for. So yeah, Fauna ended up with this um, little flower kind of house i don't even know does she sell them does she just collect them we will never know but it's yeah it's definitely red so you know does the trick and after seeing the red section in all of its glory we're gonna hop over to as you can hopefully see the purple section uh this has been a topic on my channel before i will admit because this was probably the most challenging area for me i can't even tell you why really like there's so many purple flowers and I kind of made use of that. I made a flower kind of garden farmy thing here in the front. I used the toy ducks because Mallory literally looks the same. So our idea on stream was basically that Mallory is the mom and she has a bunch of kids, uh, four of them making their way over here to, I don't know, either the pond or I guess this little like uh, picnic table setup. Uh, another one is already waiting here. And if Mallory does happen to be home in the DA, you will find a few more kids in that house too. So she is a, she's a hardworking mom, you know, of, of a lot of different little toy ducks 
that look exactly like her, which was super fun. And then like all the different flowers. But for some reason, I kind of just struggled with this area. Also, by the way, I did decorate the beaches with just a bunch of flowers. Uh, a lot of times you can't really get there though. So they're kind of closed off, but technically they are decorated. And then of course we made use of the Moroccan furniture and we have another little glowing moss um, pond, glowing, yeah, glowing moss pond, um, because you know, it does have a purple variation. So I'm sure as heck gonna use it. And you can see we're heading into the yellow section. Also, by the way, in case you dream of this island, there is a lot of different goodies, some outfits, some little photo props, you know, all, all the good stuff for you to have a hopefully very good experience here on Meliora, which by the way, means something like to make things better because my idea was that my rep makes this island better, you know, because of the colors brought back. Anyway, let's focus on the yellow section. Um, this is probably one of my favorite ones, I will say. Just the entire composition of it, you know, the way the mushrooms look, and then we've got a pretty good view of like the beach here with more mushrooms. We've got the little tents waiting for you, so it's also looking kind of cozy. It just feels like it all came together really nicely. And we have a big, big flower farm. Um, I did two different layouts. One of them is more the stripey design that I usually go for. Um, and then on the other side here, that kind of continues with this like checkered print. And then before we head on over to the left, obviously also Sheldon who lives in this area is home. So we're gonna take a look at that in a second. But first, let me show you the magical circle and this, might just be my favorite thing on the entire island. I can't even, I actually tore this uh, area down. It was kind of looking a bit different for, for a while, but I tore it down and then just decided to put in this magical circle with the glowing moss boulder, mum cushions, some tree stumps, and a bunch of gyrids kind of all around. And it makes me really happy. I think it's just the color yellow, you know, it brings out the happy vibes. So that's awesome. Oh, paid actor, AKA butterfly over here. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> and then before we continue, um, let's also take a look at Sheldon's interior. And I mean, most of y'all were probably expecting it. It is very yellow. It is very, very yellow. It's very bright, you know? So in case you're watching this, like just before bed, I am so sorry. There is no dark mode available in this house. <laughs> it's just filled with like glowing stuff and happy vibes, I guess. Um, and Shelton is kind of an underappreciated cutie, I would say. Um, very happy I chose him as the yellow villager. All right, let's continue outside. I always kind of feel bad just leaving my villagers questioning why I left them, but we have stuff to see, you know, uh, namely the black area, which is what we're heading into next. In this area, you'll see I used a bunch of the cedar trees because they have a much darker vibe. I also switched the um, wheat fields to kind of the darker variation. And then this one has kind of this, I don't know, almost, I get, I guess, elegant vibe. And then both the black and white area are supposed to kind of almost be like mirror images of each other because of their like residence too, you know, Fleury and Hamfrey, super freaking cute together. Anyway, both of them are using the pillar items. Both of them are using um, kind of some of the bunnies, you know, just hopping around. I think there's a bike in the, in the white part as well. We've got some ducks around the pond and I would like to direct your attention to me using roses. That is pretty much not heard of. But for this area, apart from the roses, there's literally only three black flowers. And so that just made it almost impossible to bring this vibe across. So I decided to go for roses, which is kind of wild. Um, and then once we get to the part where you can kind of hop over to the um, white section, unfortunately, none of these two cuties are home. I really do actually like their homes a lot. So if they are home in the DA, make sure to check it out. And in between their houses, you can see the little moon. I just thought it was cool, you know, with black and white being such opposites to kind of emphasize that and add a bit more of a magical element to it. And then I also tried to be a little bit sneaky and symmetrical in this part. You'll see, you know, the fencing is kind of the same and then the garden lanterns. Also, the waterfalls are very loud. <laughs> and then we've got the ducks over here also kind of having a chat, you know, and then obviously Flurry and Hamfrey, which I feel like are pretty much uh, mirror images of each other and very much in love on this island. <laughs> Heading over to the white section, as promised, it holds a lot of similarities to the um, black section in terms of the items I use, like the bunnies. 
the pillar items, we've got a pond, we've got a little bike, you know, you can get some pretty cute shots like with the house and the pillars in the background. Um, and then you just head on over here. You can already see the campsite. That is going to be in the last area that we see though. And then of course we've got more ducks, which I love. Um, let me know in the comments, do you prefer decoy ducks or toy ducks? This is a very important topic. I am going to be voting uh, toy ducks. And I know this is, this is a controversial topic, but yeah, let me know about that. <laughs> and then from the white section, we are going to be hopping over to blue, which also is using roses, as you might already be able to tell. Now, blue is probably the area that holds the most, like, different color tones, if that makes sense. We've got some very, like, dark blue, and then we've got some almost, like, sky-ish blue, some more turquoise. It was just, like, too hard to find just stuff that fit each other perfectly. So I decided to go a little bit um more out, I guess, and use a few different shades. We're gonna look at Filbert's house in a second, but before, let me show you the area. Basically, this is also the only one that includes water um, with like a bridge in the actual area. Apart from that, all the areas are just kind of separated by a little bit of water um, because, you know, water is blue. So that makes sense, right? <laughs> And then over here, you can just, oh, well, you can sit down on the tree stem too. I was kind of more sitting down uh, or planning to sit down on this, uh, excuse me, on this bench here. Thank you, thank you. Um, you know, just wiggle your feet, enjoy the, the blue vibes, whatever that means. I'm not quite sure. Uh, and then we've got the big, big mushroom platforms, which I absolutely love. Um, just any mushroom items in this game are so fun to work with. And then there is also this little platform um, you can climb up and just kind of get a better view of this area. Makes me really happy. I think this turned out quite cute, um, even with all the different shades of blue. And then, of course, as promised, we are going to take a look at this blue interior as well. There we go. This one is actually a bit of kid core aesthetic because, I mean, look at Filbert. I couldn't help it, you know? So he's got a bunch of toys that kind of spurred around, some bears having a conversation. He kind of was just drawing a little bit. There's some chaos on the floor because, I mean, it kind of fits, right? Um, But I still did try to kind of bring across a few of those fairy core aesthetic vibes, just with like the star fragments and all that kind of stuff. Even Filbert has a bunch of different shades of blue uh, on him, so we're really, we're really doing okay with this area. And now I feel like this might be the area that a lot of you have been waiting for, just because I am a little known here and there for not really liking the color pink. Um, and the next area, is the pink area and it's a pretty big one too and this is gonna be shocking but i think alongside the yellow section this might be my favorite <laughs> so let's take a look at it over here to the left we have a little gyroid concert going on you know with uh, some music unfortunately the music player is kind of far away so you still hear the in-game music but yeah they're just kind of singing up a storm and then over here on the right hand side I wanted to include one more of those magic circles. I didn't make it quite as big as in the yellow section, but um, still kind of still kind of a vibe. I don't know, I still kind of enjoy it. And then from here, we can head down this path. I used some peach trees because I feel like they bring the pink across. And um, then we've got Ursula and Freckles alongside each other and uh, a little windflower farm in front of Ursula's house. This is really just very pink. This is uh, this is a lot of stuff and items and customizations I've literally never used before. Um, but yeah, I uh, oddly enough had some fun with this part. Um, there is also a little pond, but not not just any pond. This is a heart shaped pond because pink and cutesy, right? <laughs> it just felt like the natural thing to do. And then if you kind of venture off the main path and take this plank path over here, it leads you to a very pink picnic with a uh, little ukulele, you know. There's also some more like tents there in the background. I just kind of wanted to frame the area. Also, I kind of hid my museum here because the museum literally does not fit anything. I meant to include it in the red section on the beach, but then I, there wasn't enough space. Like I literally couldn't move it after I had upgraded it. Uh, so it's just kind of hidden and we don't talk about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ursula doesn't seem to be home and Freckles doesn't either. Wow. None of them want to show us their interiors. They are very pink. Highly recommend seeing them. 
Um, and then just next to Freckles house, we do have another little picnic spot, you know, the garland, a peach pie, who could say no to that, right? Who could say no? So yeah, surprisingly enough, this is um, not my least favorite area, even though pink is probably my least favorite color. <laughs> Moving on, this is the last color focused area and it's, as you can hopefully tell, orange. Um, this one, just right off the bat, I knew that this needed to be a little farm, farmy bit, fa fairy farm bit, I guess. Um, I did try to kind of, you know, include some of the star fragments and still, still include some of those vibes, but it just needed to have farms. I mean, pumpkins and carrots, you know, you can kind of sit down here, enjoy a fresh, fresh orange as well. And then of course we've got some little bunnies. Uh, again, orange was a little bit harder than I thought, which is I guess also the reason why I kind of ventured into the farm aesthetic so much. Um, but we do have like some uh, hyacinths and butterflies and like a flower farmy aesthetic. And I did decorate the beach as well. Um, and Nook's Cranny is kind of part of the orange section for me here because even though it has that blue roof, it still kind of feels more like an orange building. Um, but yeah, uh, orange is much more like much harder than I expected because again, a lot of furniture isn't really super orange. It's just kind of like orange wood or it has like just the brown variation. So this was an interesting challenge that I didn't expect to be a challenge. And then we also have a teeny tiny orchard. So like I said, orange is kind of the full on uh, farmy vibe. Okay, and then if you've seen my last video, that is when we decorated the last area that we're about to look at. You can head on through the orange section, like the orchard right here, and climb up and uh, get a pretty, a pretty nice view of this area already. We are, of course, going to look at this in detail, but um, this is the part where all of the colors flow together. So nature has been restored, balance has been restored, the colors have been brought back to life and by giving them each like a respective area where they can really shine, they also are able to combine again and uh, make this happy area. It's kind of designed in a way that towards the edge, it is much more the color vibe of that respective area. So here it's kind of the orange that's starting to bleed into the middle, but then towards the middle, it's supposed to be much, much more colorful. As you can see with the little rainbow log extra long sofa, I don't know, this just honestly makes me so happy to see. It's such a little happy vibe right here by the entrance of this part. And then you are pretty much supposed to, oh yeah, I turned off this gyro by the way, because this one is, is, is too excited. This one is going too hard. <laughs> so I kind of turned this off. It's just supposed to look cute, right? And then let's head on over here to the bridge, which is where you can see the power source of this island with the magical rock garden all around it. Um, I did this off camera, like off video, because I the, spawning rocks, it's whenever you intend for them to spawn certain places, it's just gonna be a pain. I, I honestly, this was too much of a struggle. It shouldn't have been that much of a struggle, but it kind of was, but it's fine because we got here in the end and I'm really, really happy with the way that it turned out. And uh, this is basically fueling the entire island, you know? We obviously do have like a few more of those power sources, but it's, it's, it's some heavy magic, you know? It is some heavy magic. You can also go ahead and head up here and uh, get another view of this. This is not as centered as the other one is, but it still kind of gives you, I think, a pretty cute vibe. Now, I will say that some parts of this are glitching whenever you look like turn it to the diagonal camera, so that's a bit interesting. But um, yeah, still kind of gives you a cool overview. Probably, probably kind of like my favorite spot. Like just for this view alone, I wanted to kind of create this island. That's kind of what sparked the the theme idea for me. So there's that. Um, we do have um, another little friend with the rainbow sweater over here. We've got some more of those red flowers coming from the red section, just going like in between to kind of show you that. And then if we head on over here, this is where the um, undoubtedly the yellow section comes into play as well as the purple section. You can kind of hop around here and just explore if you want to, but um, yeah, it's, it's just, again, it's just for vibes only. <laughs> In the background, you can already see the black coming into play as well. So we've got a bunch of black flowers kind of sneaking in just with a few of those colored vibes in between. We've got some more toy ducks because as I mentioned, I absolutely love them. I also love tall weeds, which you might be able to tell from this area. Basically morph this entire path all around it. 
So that was kind of an interesting development, um, but I'm happy with the way that it turned out. And then again, we can head on over from the black section kind of to the white section. Although of course, here in the middle, it all kind of starts blending together. So the closer you kind of get to the power source here, the more colorful it's kind of supposed to get. And then more towards the edge here, you can see a bunch more of like the, the white itself. This is actually also where I decided to include the campsite because I do feel like it very much gives off the, you know, cream, very light and white vibes. So I decided to put it here, but I also decided to add some more tents in different colors to then fully drive like the rainbow, uh, like colorful fairy meadow home. Uh, we also have another rainbow pillow right here. You can just kind of relax and enjoy the hopefully calming vibes. I'm not quite sure, I do hope so. And last but not least, you can head on over this bridge, which just includes a little bunny meadow and another place for you to kind of chill. Uh, you probably took your bike here, have a little diary right there, I don't know. Um, and then there's a bunch of little bunnies just munching on the different colored flowers. And the circle right here is pretty much where it ends. This truly was a really, really challenging project. This was probably the hardest island I've ever created because focusing on one color so, so intently was just very limiting in a, in a way. But I do have to say that I'm very happy with the finished result. I'm very happy with the transitions between the areas, how like different they all look if you actually jump from one area to the next. And so I'm happy that I saw it through till the end. Definitely also make sure to check out my Four Seasons Island as they both kind of play in the same universe. And then thank you all so, so much for watching this. And I hope you have an amazing time until I see you in my next video. Bye everyone.